On this week's episode, we're joined by the hilarious comedian, Newfoundlander, Colin Hollett. Colin has spent time living and working in Edmonton and also had a career in real estate before he started doing comedy full-time. We chat about life in Newfoundland, what it's like to tour as a comedian, where he gets his inspiration, and how he balances everything in between. Listen in as we go through it all. I was the same old me With the same old blues I was the same old me I was the same old me with the same old blues. I was the same old me. You can sing it. 30, uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. You can't okay. do anything more than 30 seconds. Oh, easy. That would be that would be torture. You only gonna do it four seconds. Yeah. yeah four you seconds. We get the chorus in. Oh yeah. Totally get the chorus in. Easy. No problem. Mm-hmm. So you said. Uh, you're a stand-up comic, mm-hmm. yeah. and you've been doing that for ten uh, years. Ten years, yeah. Started in oh nine. Started in oh nine. Got into a comedy competition um, for shits and giggles by uh, by uh, by accident. Actually, I met the song for amateur night, and I got into a competition that was for amateurs and pros. Six days notice, I locked myself in my room. My fucking roommates were wondering what the hell was wrong with me because I was I wouldn't come out. In the bedroom, for I was in there like twelve to sixteen hours a day oh, writing, 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 writing. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. It was just fucking, just me and her fucking chicken farts, man. Fucking <laughs> chicken <laughs> farts. <laughs> <laughs> just in there for a fucking full week, man. Just never coming out hardly, and just like working on five minutes. <clears throat> and then I, I won my night to go to the finals. And then, uh, which blew my fucking mind. So you did five minutes your first time? That's a pretty solid bit of material. Yeah, well, it was nine of us. Seriously. And yeah. everybody had to do five minutes. Yeah. And the top two went to the finals. And uh, and then it was like, uh, other ones went to like a wild card round. They were like third, fourth, and fifth and stuff. And yeah. had a chance to get to. Uh, but yeah, so me and another hilarious comedian who's gone on to have a very successful career as well. Just opened up for Russell Peters and everything. Like, oh, wow. Like legit career uh we both started like around the same time uh we got first and second for our night nice went to the finals and uh just i just had a hot set that night and won it your second set ever yeah was a hot set yeah okay and, for everyone and, listening and, doesn't always work and, like this i know i know <laughs> and then i and and it was crazy because the guy i beat was like a legit pro yeah uh, well when i said the guy i beat like when i got second like he should like he's the way he's had like he had like at the time, he already had well over an hour, probably close to two hours of material. Wow. He he's already done uh, Halifax Comedy Festival, and and uh, you know he had this massive corporate gig for Alexander Keats Brewery. For, um, you know, like he like legit comedian. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I just happened to have the the hot five that night. He, we all did, but I just happened to have a hot one and just edged him out. I think he, I think actually he went some uh, bit over his time, got deducted, and I think that's actually what made me leave Frog here. I lost some points oh, at the like, end. Yeah, I think that Dirty. Might, I think it might have been, yeah. Do you I remember your, points. your but best I did, punchline? But I, um, yeah, I was talking about, um, I, was t- I mean, it's your first say, so you know, you, you just, you're doing a lot of crotch humor, but I was talking about the first time I ever shaved my pubes and how I didn't want to do it as a whole story because I was the last person in my class hit puberty. And by the time I got my pubes, all the, everyone was shaving their pubes. And yeah. I was like, because they said, you know, they're doing because it made their dick look bigger. And I'm like, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, and then I fucking, and I was like, well, I, I got to do it now. <laughs> and I was like my whole life waiting for it. So I was like, I was so torn. But I was just like, and I, I felt like I was betraying my own body yeah. when, when I was shaving it. This is, well, yeah, I get the big laugh. I was like, I felt like uh, as I was shaving it, so I felt like I was a sailor throwing a perfectly good crew of men overboard for absolutely no reason at all. <laughs> Make the boat look bigger, <laughs> and uh, that's the one to get the club, get the big, uh, play, play the biggest punchline on my set. It's crazy. Like me and my, me and my two buddies, we did a, a nationwide comedy tour last year. We're doing it again this year. We did twenty nine shows across Canada, twenty seven cities, sold out twenty one. Nice. We're doing thirty something this year. There's a new fees everywhere. Oh Ooh. really? Everywhere. It is. Crazy. It's like the Irish, right? Like there's 5 million, 4.5 to 5 million in Ireland. But do you know there's 50 million Irish passports? That's just passports. Hmm. Interesting. 
passports. There's 50 million Irish passports. That's but, only five. They're everywhere. And that's just passports. That's not counting people that have all these Irish roots that don't have passports. So you got hundreds. Of, that's why the Conor McGregor is got, and, and the pride, right? Go fuck Conor McGregor comes out. They everyone goes fucking nuts. He'll sell it all over the world. Mm. Irish are everywhere. Yep. And it's like Newfoundland is like a similar version of that. It's like there's like a half a million on the island, mm-hmm. but there's a good five million plus kicking all around hmm. the country. All over the place. Try to try to list a way that Newfoundland isn't like Ireland. It sounds like you won't find it. Find five many of Right. It's, it's definitely that's way cool. more like it than it's not like it. Well, that's easy because most people have heard of Ireland. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can paint a pretty good picture there. Do you still live there? You live in Newfoundland now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would, if I had, yeah, I would say I'd live there. Yeah, I don't want a house. I bought a house there three years ago. Yeah, yeah, you're in Edmonton now. So I'm kind of so I bought a house there three years ago, and then I moved to Edmonton in September. Oh, when the fuck was that? 2017. It's a, it's a haze because you're in the process of drying 20, out. 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> really though. Mm-hmm. 2017, and then I didn't really get back. I was on the road most of that time yeah. uh, from like uh, 27 from like yeah. Uh, August of 2017. I didn't stop until January of 2019. So then I was like, all right. And that's a lot of fucking going, man. Mm. Right? So then I went home or I'm on my home and I said, you know, I'm just going to take a few months, chill the fuck out, go to the gym, try to fucking get in shape a bit. I got some weight gone now, which is nice, but got back into hockey. <clears throat> kind of try to stay low key. I did sober January again. I did sober January back to back years, which was fucking huge for me because if you see me the fucking two years before that, I was a fucking train wreck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, was drinking, I was drinking like fucking, I was getting hammered yeah. five nights a week for about two years. Like yeah. I went off the fucking rails. I went to a breakup and I just said, fuck it. And I just went nuts. But then with the nuts, with the chaos, the comedy started also going up with it. Like it's funny every, how that works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what Artists I mean? Artists need some pain and chaos. and Yeah, and some and a whole lot of fuck it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, it's weird. You play it safe. You know, it's, it's, it's such a double-edged sword, the arts. Right. Right? How, you, how's you, your creativity changed since you've cleaned up a bit? Yeah, definitely gone down a bit. Yeah. Um, still good, because my life is still... My life's still in regards to the average life and whatever, it's still pretty, You're still it's still pretty great. Yeah. And I like, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not like I don't drink or anything anymore. Like I still like Jesus Christ. Like even right now, like it's told us you drink eight of the I last just, 11 days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you must well, be right. Right, up right, a storm. right. Yeah. 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 See, that, that's what it's like now. Now mm-hmm. I'll do that. Like I'll, I'll have a couple weeks where I'll just go nuts. A couple binges. Yeah. And then work. like, you know, and, and then, and then I'll go a couple few weeks and, Maybe I'll have one night, mm-hmm. right? And then all of a sudden I'll have a week or two where I'm half nuts again. But before it was just nuts every week. But I got, I got, to, I'm trying to find that balance now of mm-hmm. bringing it in and out and trying to control it. Before I couldn't control it, I couldn't go a week. Barely, I could go barely a fucking day or two without a drink. Now I can, and the sober January has really helped me with that. But I had a mig- migraine, man. Holy fuck, man. The first sober January I did, the migraine. Yeah. I had like a migraine for almost two weeks, man. That's a lot. It's I'm a drug. Alcohol withdrawal is real. Yeah. Do you feel that alcohol is almost a requirement? Can you be a real gigging, touring comedian and not drink? Yes, you can. I know comedians that do it. Mm-hmm. Um Throw it on the West Coast. You NBC. can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then lots of them substitute with weed, right? Yeah. And obviously you can be creative. I mean, fuck, when I first started comedy, I mean, I won that comedy competition. I wasn't drinking or smoking weed, mm. and I won it. In my first two years of comedy, I was very clean. I barely swore on stage or anything. My, my, my material overall was clean bits. I was a very clean comic, and I was getting good laughs. I got signed with a talent agency. So you can clearly do it. Mm-hmm. What changed? But uh, two fucking breakups. <laughs> 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 I just can't think it is is were you drinking while you're sorry or were you just like going out partying and meeting new people it's and a bit, it's a bit of everything yeah yeah it's all of that yeah it's just numbing your brain not wanting to yeah just it's a coping mechanism mm. but it's also a social mechanism yeah because uh, everything is that's what I'm saying, everything is centered around drinking don't matter what the fuck it is you can't 
you, even when you're physically active, you can go for a hike, bring a knapsack of beers. Yeah. Right? You go play hockey, beers in the dressing room. You go golfing, beers on the fucking cup. Oh, yeah. On the golf course. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You go fishing, there's beers on the boat. Like, it's, 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 it's everything. Mm -hmm. You throw axes at an axe bar. You're drinking beer while you're at it. You do CrossFit. <laughs> you might not be drinking. <laughs> right. Well, well, you never know. <laughs> well, there's yoga now where you drink beer while you do yoga. Yeah. Beer yoga. Yes. Yeah. Have you heard of this? Yoga. It's a real thing. No. Yeah. Where? It's like it's, it's <laughs> Ireland, it, Newfoundland. It, it's a thing, yeah. There's, yeah. Oh, yeah. way so, better than goat some yoga. I don't enjoy doing when I'm drinking, but you know, I, I get it. I'm surprised that, you didn't. But bring that's, a drink but, so that's, over but, that's but that's east. Mm -hmm. That's now as you get west, it's not. It's yeah, it's, it's not as it, integrated but is it into the drinking society that causes the chaos that helps lead to the the extra creativity. Can you just have darkness and chaos and be sober and have that creativity? Yes. Yeah. You can. But it's just, it's just easy to turn to that bottle, man. Oh, it, sure it, for is. for every, when when your head's fucked up, mixed with the culture, and all your friends and all of society, is pushing you towards it or drawing you into it, or they're not, they're they're definitely not trying to not get you there. Mm -hmm. They're not telling you to not do it. Like, so mm -hmm. here I am working evenings and weekends as a stand up comedian, and I'm single. Mm -hmm. How the fuck do you not drink? <laughs> like awesome. it's insanely hard. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because like every every day. Well, from what I know about it, the only way to really do it is just move to Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, help me, man. Yeah. I got a gym membership, and I walk. Good life. In, and I want no uh, Edmonton Rec Center. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, All it's right. like uh, local. Yeah, like a town. It's got like basketball courts. Uh, Tennis courts, swimming pool, like nice, you know, all, nice. The, all it's like everything all in one center. Yeah, mm -hmm. weights and everything. So I like that. I got one right now at my back. I live right across the house that I bought in St. John's is right across from our version of that. Easy. And I got one there. You can get good life for like whatever the fuck they charge. Too and much. Too much, way too much. And then if you ever try to cancel your membership, they make you feel like shit. <laughs> For fuck's sakes. Yeah. Don't get me started on that. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, Plenty of jokes written about oh, good life, I bet. Oh, I can't stay. Good life, man. I can't stand them. And then, like, yeah, then I go to uh, yeah, the field house, man. It's like 60, 65 bucks a month, and it's everything. Mm, everything. Wow. It's killer. That's awesome. Yeah, there's even like Tim Hortons in it and everything for you want to grab coffee on the way out. You look good. Oh, you're you glowing. Need. Thanks, buddy. Right, right. <laughs> vitamin D means a lot. From, come, come, come from Crystal Sid. <laughs> Crystal Sid. <laughs> the energy in this room. You're in the front row, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I guess for our listeners who can't see, Colin has this like pinkish fuchsia aura radiating out of him. No, that's the sunburns. <laughs> yeah. That's the sunburns. <laughs> like, picture of Dragon Ball Z. He's going Super Saiyan over there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, you were doing some some real estating yeah, for yeah. a bit. Well, because I had to do a gig at the Halifax Comedy Club Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I was working as an electrician, and they wouldn't give me the time off. They wouldn't give me Thursday, Friday off. I was working a Monday to Friday job, and I said, well, I said, I, and I, I turned it down. An hour later, I was like, what the fuck am I at? Turning down comedy for this is electrical gig. I was like, I, I love comedy. Like, you know what I mean? So I was like, I went back. I was like, man, give me the fucking Thursday, Friday off. And they're like, well, no, I was like, I said, well, I'm going. I'm letting you know I'm going. I said, well, you might have a job when you get back. I said, well, that's the risk I'm to take. I said, hey, you want to fire me over that? I said, you, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I went to the weekend, had a fucking blast, came back, sure enough, had no job. Mm -hmm. And I was stressed the fuck out. Mm -hmm. This is, and I just started, like, I can't make a living at comedy, man. I've only been at comedy, like, not even a year. Yeah. So I don't have enough material or experience or anything. So I was like, I need something flexible. So that I can go on the road for a few weeks. When I come back, I still, I still have a job, whatever. My brother's working as a realtor. I thought, that's great, because I can go and give my clients to him while I'm gone. When he goes on vacation with his wife and kids or whatever, I can just look after his clients. Like We can like work together like that. So that's what I did. I got into that. And then the real estate was really starting to grow, and I was doing really well at real estate. But as the real estate was growing, my comedy started to grow too. And eventually, both started to get to, like I started to get like really well known for both. Mm-hmm. You know, and 
I was like, I can't, just, you just can't, you just can't, one's gonna, one, they, they get to the point where they actually start hurting each other. They can't gonna, they, anyway. Right. So I was like, I gotta pick one, and it was like, and it was so easy to pick the real estate because of the, the money, stability, future kind of type of thing. It took a lot of balls, actually, if I'm honest with you. If I can be real, like, be to, real, son. To say, fuck it. Like, to not get greedy. Because, hmm. uh, you know what I mean? And stay with real estate for the money. I was like, the whole reason I got into this was to, su- was to support the comedy until I got to a point where I wanted to go full time with it. I said, I can't lose sight of that. I can't let I can't let the money and everything else dictate that. So I, I fucking cut it out and went full time then with the mm-hmm. with the comedy when I felt like I was at a spot and I've been full full time now for three years. Wow, a little over three years. And at that point, and you had uh, like a, yeah. a slush fund. For the- I had a bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> It was shortly after that that me and the missus broke up, and it was horrific. How long was that relationship? Um, about two and a half years. Just bought a house and a dog. Mm-hmm. Had her name on the mortgage. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's four months after about the house. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into the details of it, um, but it was fucking bad, man. Yeah. It was really, really, and that's when I went drinking like I've never been drinking before in my life. So whatever either bit of money I had to, like, and it's not only that, like, <clears throat> the drinking, yes, I spent money on drinking, but what's crazy is is how many nights I go out for fuck and don't spend any money. It's one of the reasons why I was able to fucking go out so much, because I'd go out and all my friends would be like, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. And then I was going through a hard time, people were always buying all my drinks all yeah. night, and like the amount, the amount of nights I went out and they did not spend a cent or only spent 10, 20 bucks. There's people like, dude, how the fuck are you out all the time? How the fuck, how the fuck do you afford to do it? And I, and I, and, and I tell them, well, most of these nights are not fucking spending any money. And then there's fans coming up, fans of my comedy. Oh man, big fan of yours, buying me fucking shots and drinks all night. Like, so between that and my friends, it was a lot of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Of, of not spending the money while I was out. So I, how do you how do you keep saying no to free drinks all the time, especially when you're going through this fucking thing and you got no day job to wake up to anymore? Because it happened all around the same time. Mm. I'm single mm. and I'm doing com- you know no day job and everything. Oh, it's oh, it's a perfect fucking storm, man. Perfect storm. And it was like a year and a half hard of that, and I was like, all right, this is fucked. And I was like, in my comedy says and it'll be good for the career too to get out, get away distance myself, work work on my material, stuff at West, grow that audience out there, get new material, try to get more, not just funny for Newfoundlanders, but funny for Canadians and people in general, funny yeah. for people of different, because it's very white mm-hmm. in Newfoundland. So it was just like, it was, it made, me and Edmonton made, so it was perfect for everything, it was perfect for my comedy, it was perfect for my personal life, mm-hmm. perfect for my finances. It, it, it made so much sense to go to Edmonton. Mm. So I went up there. Yeah. And then I was, and then I was just nonstop when I was up there. Until January of 2019. And then I just said, all right, it, it made sense then to just live at home. I had some stuff around the house I had to do. So I said, instead of having a house in St. John's and a condo in Edmonton or a room in Edmonton, like, mm. you know what I mean? It made sense to just kind of bunker down there for the last few months. Yeah, so you had a little reset in Edmonton? Yeah. Are you, are you happy, remorseful, regretful? What came out of that perfect storm? Was that, can you see positivity in it now or is that just a whole fuck? Um, I choose, I always, I always try to look at the glass half full. Mm -hmm. So I, if, if not even more so. So yeah, I always take, I I, I always, yeah, I always take all the good from it. And the good from it obviously is, it's got, it it took my career to another level. Mm -hmm. My writing went through the roof after the breakup, my more videos going viral, Get more shows coast to coast, bigger shows, more money. Uh, just going, going at it, throwing the same fuck it more, mm-hmm. and back and, to your roots. Yeah, yeah, and just and that that, that breakups are as any comedian man. Breakups are fucking wicked for the writing. Yeah. It's Did, true. Do you feel man. like it was almost one or the other? Then like wife, house, 
dog, kids. I thought or, I thought I was doing good with her. Mm-hmm. I, I did, mm-hmm. and then and then it was, uh, but it clearly there was another level because I went next level after the breakup. Yeah, right. So you know, it's uh, about. I mean, that's any that's that's a lot of the arts. I mean, what's um, it? The uh, city in color. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Dallas Green. Dallas Green, man. <laughs> yes, his quote is something a bit like that about how about being depressed or something and mm-hmm. the, he hates being happy or something because when he's happy he can't write any music. Mm. He writes all his best music when he's depressed. Yeah, I know I know a lot of people like that. If there's any hot blondes out there that want to help progress Cullen's career <laughs> and be a part of his material, <laughs> buy him a drink, date him for Go a few shows. months, a couple years, dump him so bad. Please, <laughs> yeah. there is Stop. another level. I can see another level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's a mod fuck by. Yeah. <laughs> right? But, no, I take a lot of good from it. A lot of good. Uh, I always choose to see the... Because in all bad, there's good. All good, there's bad. I, and I just choose to see... I always try to be an optimistic person. When I'm not being optimistic, like when I'm complaining or ranting, because like that's like in my comedy when I rant or when I do a video rant, I'm still seeing... Because like what I'm doing is I'm taking something shitty and now I'm turning it into something funny. I'm turning it into another way to get notes. So it's like I'm ranting for the sake of of being funny like I'm not actually being negative yeah in my in my in, in my head and my heart mm-hmm. you know what I mean like I always try to like I, this thing's pissing me off this thing's annoying me this thing is crazy this thing's ridiculous so but the other side of it is oh it's comedy gold mm. it's something to rant about is mm. that therapeutic you know? for you to yes. vent through that 100% yeah. comedy yeah. so therapeutic it's the most therapeutic thing that I've ever done what I'm what I'm known for my following is doing video rants I've done a couple sketches that mm-hmm. that got some traction, but I'm more just like ranting. That's why I'm also uh, looking to start up my own podcast, actually, because I feel like... Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think I'm a podcast kind of guy where I can just air out my thoughts. Long form. Yeah, long form. Long form. I want a podcast in, New- in St. John's that's no- that no one's doing. I-, I-, I think St. John's and Newfoundland... For the modern world is still such like this hidden gem. Mm. It's full. It's so rich in characters. Mm-hmm. It's insane, and the, the the characters that are coming out there is it's, it's including ridic- yourself. It's, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. I'm like, and I want to like just get them all on, interview them, and like, just like man, like we got former NBA champion Glenn Davis living in Newfoundland. Really? Like from Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he plays. We get the basketball. You guys get basketball team here. Yeah. Hurricanes. Hurricanes. Well, well that, like, yeah. yeah. It's Halifax <laughs> team. Kate Brenton got a team. It's the Canadian Basketball League. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he plays for the Edge, for St. John's. That's he? Yes. <laughs> and, Big and, baby. Yeah. And he fucking, he's, he hustles like a motherfucker too. Like he, he's, he's like he's still good, and he's a he's hilarious. He's a riot. Yeah. Um. And Newfoundland is such a unique place. Like I was on a bachelor party with uh, with Brad Marchand. His brother uh, was getting married, oh, yeah. and they're like, "Yeah, they didn't want to go to Vegas for a bachelor party." Okay. <laughs> they, they said, "Let's go somewhere like off the grid, like a bit." Yeah. And go out. So we had Winnipeg Jets farm team there for a few years. The year that the Winnipeg Jets came back into the league, we got the farm team exact like mm. in conjunction with it. Okay, and it was wicked. Oh man, dude, the team, the teams that we had there were fire. We went right to the Cup finals there one year. Lost to the Texas Stars, four games to two. The next year, like eight of those guys from that team were. Like six of them were playing Winnipeg, eight or nine were in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it was their killer team. I became really good friends with one of them. He's from Halifax, Andrew Gordon. Oh yeah, and uh, great guy, and uh, great player. He actually won a couple of Memorial Cups with Hershey Bears. Anyways, he's friends with Brad. They played growing up because Brad's obviously from Nova Scotia as well. Mm-hmm. And it was like bachelor party was in St. John's. Like man, you, he's like my buddy Colin was there, man. He, He's nuts, man. Like he's he's, he's, he's hilarious. So he's like, we got to invite him to the bat, allow it to bachelor party. Yeah. So here it was, man. It was all these NHLers, man. Writers at Sports Illustrated. 
fucking just like all these like gems and, and me <laughs> right and it was just like and it was just like it was like here I just go around like at this bachelor party like, drink it all all weekend with all day. and it happens all the time mm-hmm. and the chillers will come in all the time yeah because we just some of the characters like they come through that play and, and they don't give a fuck when they come because yeah. that's why they're coming yeah it's a let loose right so it's just like it's such a funny place it's the funniest place in Canada one of the funniest places in the world nobody gives a fuck <laughs> it's just like and it's just chaos yeah. all the time and it's just and it's sweet just, so it'd be like a podcast it'd be comedy it'd be just chatting with people just, yeah. ranting the music talent too funny accents yeah, yeah. the music talent mm. that's on the island yeah that should be famous at least nationwide if mm. not worldwide and they're bare, and some of these people aren't even known in their own province mm. Is insane. The, the musical talent in Newfoundland will blow your fucking mind. Yeah. If you go there, bands talk about it all the time. Yeah. When you come to George Street Fest, they talk about like to like your live talent, like your live music scene here. Because we have George Street. Is yeah. for anyone listening don't know, it's a street. It's only bars. It's like forty four. It's the it's the most bars per capita. In Canada, it's like 44 bars on this one street. No cars allowed on it. No traffic. It's only, it's a bars and strip clubs. It's all it is. And it's just, <laughs> you go bar hopping like a motherfucker. And in August, they shut the street down. You got to pay to get on the street. But now you can drink on the street. So you can take your beer out of a bar, drink in the street, go into another bar with the beer you bought from another bar. <laughs> right? And like, it's just this, and, and, and you got like the Arkells be playing one night. Our Lady Peace is playing the next night. You know, Big Wreck is playing another night. Yeah. Like, uh, Blue Rodeo's playing another on, on the street. Yeah. That's right? Cool. And it's, 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 Party. yeah. And, but like, they'll be on the stage and they'll be like, man, there's like, you know, we, you know, we tour all, and they, you know, in between songs or whatever. Thank you so much, Connor. We love you, St. John's. And the place goes, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, and every, they always comment that, like, you know, bands will come back, will fly in sometimes like a day or two early. Mm-hmm. Just to take it in, and they're like, you know, we were at we were at such shout at the such and such pub, right? <laughs> and it's like, it's like we were there last night, and like like you know, we were bar hopping. Like the live music here is insane. Yeah. So like, there's nowhere else in Canada like it. They're like they're like the like, like you know, your street's very special. Your your music scene's very special, and it is. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'd like to do a podcast, just interviewing. Yeah. Shooting shit. Yeah. Like, right we're, doing right like we're doing right now. Like we're doing right now. Right now. But oh, back yeah. home. Yeah. And Sweet. Thing, down home, yeah. The Another thing, project. The thing, on the island, thing yeah. The thing is, just getting, getting, getting the right sponsors. Yeah. So that way you can actually properly pump it out. Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's possible, right? No question. I I'm think it'd be I think it'd be hilarious, like nothing else. Do a bit of uh, networking. Do it. Like that, you you know? know, some podcast people. So yeah, yes, make it happen. Yeah. Well, I can start up mine. You can share my stuff, and I can share your stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's. That's the plan. Oh, actually, that's a good uh, little segue there. Why don't you tell the people where we can find you? Ooh, we're wrapping it up. Uh, Colin Hollis, C-O-L-I-N-H-O-L-L-E-T-T. Facebook, yep. Instagram, it's just Colin Hollis. It's all the same. Yep. Um, yeah, Google, Google, Colin Hollis, obviously it'll all come up. Yeah. Facebook's was my reels following that. That's how my shit started to take off. I had a video go, my first real video go viral in 2014. End of 2013. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I had a really, I had one go really viral in January of 2014. And then I was on, I was on CTV mm-hmm. the next night talking about it because this thing had like a quarter million views in mm-hmm. like less than 24 hours. Wow. I remember I had this Toronto number call me at like three o'clock in the day. Like I made the video at like 10 o'clock at night and it was like three o'clock in the afternoon the next day. And I never answer numbers I don't fucking know. <laughs> and I was out whatever reason I answered that. Some producer from up in Toronto, up in, CB, up in CTV, wants, wants me on to do a live Skype chat talking about this fucking video that's going viral across the country. Hmm. Because we had a blackout, see? We locked the whole island, had no power. Yeah. We had no power for any people died. Right? When did that happen? It got so fucking cold out. And, and everyone has electric heat, everyone's got the heat going. And the power plant was built in the 60s, not designed for the population today. And it was like, it's just, just like a panel in your house. Mm. You, put, you, you put all the fucking plugs in, you turn on all the fucking lights, you turn on all the appliances, your panel's going to fucking trip. Yeah. Like that. Same thing, right? Mm-hmm. The plant is the panel. 
But as the house got bigger, you didn't upgrade the panel. So now everyone's got all the fucking plugs going. Yeah. Boom, the plant blows up. So now we got no power. Mm-hmm. We went four or five days and mar- like minus 35, minus 40. Hardly anybody had any heat. Yeah. Shit. So a few seniors died, right? Yeah. So I did this video when it, the first night of the blackout, making fun of people calling an open law and freaking out. It was like a collage of like all these different calls. I like I put it in all like, like I created the character, made it all, like all one. Yeah, the thing fucking blows up because no one had power, but everybody still had their phones. <laughs> it could still get it could still get internet through the towers. Mm-hmm. Right. So everyone's on their phones. This video pops up. It happened to be funny, so everyone starts sharing it. The thing just fucking explodes. Yeah. <laughs> perfect storm. <laughs> Very topical, <laughs> right? And then, uh, yeah, and then that's when, it, so then I started, people started liking my page and I started doing more videos, more rants, and I started ranting a bit more stuff. And then, mm. you know, the first one I was doing, I was like kind of being like a bit of a character, but then I was just, I transitioned that into just like ranting as me, mm. you know, um, yeah. And then, so that, then my, I was late into the Instagram game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys were, but Instagram, uh, it's weird. All the algor- algorithms are always changing and shit like that. I don't even know how to engage with people these days on social media. I'm not worried about it anymore. It's just like focus on your craft and the people will find you. Right. I found it. I was in denial because like Facebook is everything. Pictures, videos, statuses, mm-hmm. yada, right? I was like, Instagram's just pictures. I'm like that's, a, that's such a step backwards. I'm like, that's never going to take off. Mm-hmm. I said, why would you why would you go to something that's just pictures when Facebook has pictures plus more? Right. Yeah. I mean, it makes no sense to me. So for years I didn't make an Instagram account. And even when I did and then when I did finally make one, I still went probably about two, three years where I barely used the fucking thing. Yeah. And then I started seeing I still think Facebook's king, but what I'm finding is 17 to 25, you want to get that demographic. Instagram is is they love that man, and it's then like twenty five plus, is you get Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Mm. That that's kind of what I've been noticing. Yeah. So, I I understand like I can make the same post, like say I put a picture up in a in a funny caption, mm. and I can put that in Facebook and I can put that on Instagram and it reaches two fucking completely different sets of people. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right, so. My following on Facebook is bigger than my Instagram one. Was, <clears throat> yeah, if you're a crusty old over. geezer who's out of touch, yeah. you can follow Colin on Facebook. Anyone hip, young, and cool, <laughs> obviously you'll, you'll see you on the gram. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what you're saying? Oh, um, maybe. Um, yeah, well, before we get out of here, anything else that we uh, that we didn't get to cover or, or mention? BestConComedyTour.com is where our big nationwide tour is. Uh, so you can go to BestConComedyTour.com and it's 30-something shows across Canada. We end in Vancouver, October 27th. So all the ticket leaks to all the cities are yeah. all there. And um, would love, 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 love to have you. The plan is to do the tour every year. Mm. And every year we got new material. So you can come in four or five years in a row and four or five years in a row you get a new show every year. Cool. That's the plan. Um, you know, obviously plans change, but I mean, that's, that's what we're hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. Mm. And um, awesome. the boys seem to be hoping for that too. So, yep. Um, first annual. This is the second one. That's yeah. right. What, what is it? <laughs> this is the second <laughs> annual. <Yeah>. Listening. <laughs> for everyone who's at yeah. the first annual, come back. Yeah, come back. Well, we do. We got a, a lot of people. Shows. We do have a lot of people coming back. Absolutely. That, it's a funny show. That, that's been tagging us. Yeah, last year we did a show. Our biggest show was uh, 2,000 seats. Mm. It was out, It was outside. It was just outside the city in mm-hmm. the town called CBS. This year, it's in downtown St. John's. It's fifteen hundred seats, Ooh. and it's and uh, as of today, it's officially over half sold out now. Dang! So, DT. so we should be able, we should have been able to have fifteen hundred people downtown on a Saturday night for a comedy show. Mm. That's gonna be pretty fucking awesome, if you ask me. Absolute <laughs> time. <laughs> Absolute right. time. And it's gonna be and we got oh and we're flying in one of America's hottest fucking up and coming comics right now. He's got one of the. 100,000 followers or something man like he's he's legit he's fucking hilarious he was in Newfoundland once at the comedy club when it was there he destroyed mm. and he had such a blast his name is Griff um, he had such a riot at the comedy shows in St. John's that he got a tattoo of Newfoundland no way yeah on himself <laughs> and like and then this is his first time coming back since that show that when that was like 
oh, I don't know when that was, six, seven years ago or something like that. Yeah. So, um, and he rocked the house. And I missed it, sadly. But we're flying him in from Atlanta to, to MC the show. So it was three of us plus him at that St. John show. Saturday night downtown, drinks, and then you're out by like fucking 9, 30, 10 o'clock. George Street's right next door mm. to go fucking have a laugh. And it's going to be a killer night. Sweet. Awesome. Man, maybe I'll make it out. I well, we'll be there trip. and at least the Halifax shows for sure. Yeah. yeah, come out, man. Love <clears throat> to have you. It was, like, it's it's so much fun. Our our our, our crowd, mm-hmm. our followers are lunatics. Yeah. They're cr- <laughs> 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 And it's just savage. And it's like the shows, they're on wheels, man. Like, like we got the best fans. Let's do it. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll be there, and I hope everyone listening will be there yeah, as come, well, wherever you are. Yep. Look up, uh, what was the website again? BestConComedyTour.com. Best kind. And find your city on that fucking website. Please. And Speaking go. of cities, I'm Sidney Kazatsky, and this is my co-host, Mark, <laughs> Mark Boudreau. <laughs> and it's been Colin Hollis. Brand new view. With the same I was the same old me With the same old blues I was the same old me With the same old blues I was the same old